Today, we're going to be talking about ice. The North Pole gets most of the attention when we talk about climate change, and for pretty good reason. The Arctic is warming about twice as fast as the planet, over two degrees since 1970. But it's important we talk about the South Pole, too. It's a different beast. It holds two-thirds of all fresh water on Earth, frozen in ice. Ice in some places on the southern continent is more than half the height of Mount Everest, about three miles high. This ice has taken a long time to accumulate. Scientists' best estimate is that it's taken 45 million years to grow to its current thickness. So, with that in mind, there are some recent changes that have been occurring on the continent that are fairly concerning. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7. Let's first talk a little bit about NASA. NASA began taking detailed measurements of Antarctic ice coverage in 1978 when it launched the Nimbus 7 satellite. This picked up microwave radiation coming from the sea ice. This was the first time that they were ever able to measure the extent of ice at the Earth's poles. And because it was microwave data, the satellites could easily tell the difference between ice and open ocean, and they were able to measure it regardless of time of day and cloud cover. The government's data collection has since improved as the Department of Defense have launched several successive satellites. With this technology, we've been able to measure Antarctic sea ice almost every day over the last four decades nonstop. It's in this data that Claire Parkinson at NASA notices something startling. Sea ice at the South Pole drastically nosedived in 2014. The rate of decline between 2014 and 2017 exceeded that of even the Arctic over that time. This is very concerning because in the decades before, even while Arctic sea ice had been declining, Antarctica held on to its ice. The NASA scientist says that since 1978, peak Antarctica sea ice came in 2014. Since then, the latest measurements are as low as they've been since when the satellites were launched. All of the ice growth over the last four decades was wiped out in just the last few years. Looking at the size of this ice loss really hits home. Remember, we're looking at yearly average, so this accounts for seasonality. The Arctic lost 2.3 million square kilometers of ice between 1982 and 2016. The Antarctic lost 2 million square kilometers, almost the same amount, between just 2014 and 2017. The question that sort of smacks you in the face is, why is this happening? Scientists don't really know. It could be from a number of things. For one, land in the Arctic is getting darker. This absorbs more sunlight. Arctic sea ice has declined about 80% since 1979, and this has led to more heat absorption from sunlight. This, in turn, has weakened ocean currents that transport heat from the equator to the Arctic. Now, that heat has to go somewhere, and there's evidence that shows some of it moves to the southern hemisphere. Warmer than normal seawater, is potentially responsible for some areas of Antarctica having less ice than they did before. It's also thought that a wavier jet stream in the southern hemisphere is partially to blame. As the jet stream becomes more unstable, segments of unusually warm air can lead to temperature anomalies over parts of Antarctica. Something similar has been happening in the northern hemisphere. A wavier jet stream has led to a greater incidence of extreme weather events. In fact, there's a 2018 study from the University of Arizona that shows since 1960, the Northern Hemisphere jet stream is meandering more frequently than it had in the previous 200 years. It's so far unclear exactly what is causing this, but some scientists think that warmer oceans could be to blame. And in case you were wondering how the scientists got the historical record of jet stream activity, they took tree samples to determine annual weather patterns. So as you can tell, there isn't a clear answer to this issue. The NASA scientist hopes that the study will push others to take a closer look at what's happening in the Southern Hemisphere. 